Today, I'm taking over as GM of the absolute worst team in Madden 24, the Arizona Cardinals. And this video can't end until we hoist the Lombardi Trophy. Let's begin. Rebuilding the Arizona Cardinals. They're a 75 overall with a 73 defense and a 77 offense. This is a pitiful lineup, if I'm being honest. Offensive line is trash. Our best wide receiver is Hollywood Brown at 85 overall. He is super fast with 97 speed, but he's also star Devin, 5'9". And the Colts rebuild is one of the most interesting ones because we have Kyler Murray at quarterback. Now, the last two Maddens, he's been superstar. He's been a high overall, but he took a serious regression this year. Star Dev, 26 years old. The good news is he's 92 speed, 94 excel. You can't exactly teach that. And I still believe that Kyler Murray is our franchise quarterback. We are going to build around him. But in real life, he is injured for about eight or nine more weeks. So for the first half of this season, we can't use Kyler Murray. I guess our tight ends are all right. We've got 83 Zach Ertz, a veteran. He won't be on this team for much longer. And then we have the sophomore year Trey McBride. Uh, he's pretty fast. We're really scraping at the bottom of the barrel. This is a very tough rebuild. Paris Johnson is nice, though. I do like Paris Johnson. We have undoubtedly the worst defensive line in the league. It's not even close. This D-line is atrocious. We do have rookie BJ Ojolari. He's star dev. He's a fast linebacker, so I do think throughout this rebuild, BJ Ojolari will become a very good outside linebacker, but we're a long ways away from that. And Zayvon Collins will develop very well, too. He's pretty fast for a middle linebacker, great hit power, and despite what looks like gray hair on his head, he is 24 years old. Buddha Baker is a highlight on this defense, but he's right in that sweet spot of age where he's not getting any better. But he's not getting any worse either. For the next two years, he'll kind of float around 90 overall. I like Buda Baker, but this is like a team that really needs a full revamp. So I am considering getting some value out of Buda Baker while we can, but I'm not certain I'm going to do that yet. Jalen Thompson is okay as well. He's a star 25 year old free safety with average stats. You know, previously I said that the Rams rebuild was the most difficult difficult rebuild, but I was so wrong. This team is so much worse, and it's not even close. This team is horrible. Not only do we have the worst D-line in the league, but at least as far as Madden is concerned, we have the worst corners in the league. Marco Wilson, Rashad Fenton, and I don't even know who this is. Christian Matthew out of Valdosta State. Valdosta State. God, this team is so, this team is so bad. The timeline on Kyler Murray's injury in real life is midseason, so I'm not putting Kyler in until midseason. Additionally, I'm going to move Trey McBride to my starting tight end. McBride is not as good as Zach Ertz right now, but Zach Ertz maybe has a year left in the league, and we're not winning anything anytime soon, so there's no point in giving Zach Ertz reps. I just can't justify it. Hey, we've got a star kicker, though. I'm also moving Hollywood to slot wide receiver. I just want to get him as many reps as possible. He's the only offensive player, other than Kyler Murray, who really has a chance of progressing. So if we get Hollywood Brown to a superstar, maybe a 90 overall within a year, year and a half, that would be amazing. Now, that being said, one of the most fun parts of this rebuild will undoubtedly be the draft. The Arizona Cardinals currently have their own first round pick, which should be a really high pick because this team sucks. They have a round one pick from the Houston Texans, who also could struggle because that team is so young, although I expect them to do better than we will. We have an additional fifth round from the Eagles and the Texans, and an additional third rounder from the Eagles and Texans. So we're going to get a haul from this draft, and that's if we trade nobody. We're going to get a haul in this draft. Quarterback is kind of off the table, so when I think of positions that we need to target. Three main positions that come to mind for this team. That's defensive end, Carter Richter here out of Wisconsin. Looks like he's projected to go third off the board. My next target might be wide receiver. Hollywood's not going to cut it. Tyler's going to need some weapons. I wouldn't hate picking up a stud wide receiver in this draft, but I think the next most important position after D-line is probably corner. The highest corner in this draft is 25th right now. That's Garrison Henry out of West Virginia. But of course, we got to do our scouting and actually figure out how good these guys are before we evaluate the talent. Looks like late, there's a few more wide receivers. Robert Kent, Shaden Haynes, Anton Mason is another right end. It looks like there's a good amount of wide receivers, edge rushers, and we're kind of shallow on corners. So we got to make sure we scout and find a stud corner. All right, gentlemen, this team is ready for, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say tanking, but a season of tanking. Let's see how they do. Let's sim to midseason. If we have one win, I will actually be shocked. Dude, I've never simmed to midseason and actually seen 0-7 until right now. But hey, this is what I said was gonna happen, right? All right, let's see how the boys did through midseason. Looks like morale is low. Players are frustrated. 
understandably. We are 0-7. It's honestly an achievement in and of itself. Ojolari has unlocked his dev trait, which is star. We did know that. Um, see, a big part of me kind of wants to trade Buddha Baker. I just, we're not going to win right now, and he's not going to get any better. Do I even keep him? I do need to set my scouts. This is going to be really, really important. So Victoria gets a boost when scouting wide receivers. National has a strength on wide receivers, so we're going to set that there. Now, Calvin Heath is my three-star, and he does have a position mismatch, but that's okay because I wanted him on Anton Mason anyway, so I didn't really have a choice unless I had hired some different scouts, but Anton Mason is projected at 19 right now. Central, I actually hired Calvin Johnson. I love that. Wide receiver expertise. I wonder why. But honestly, the main guy I'm looking at in the draft is Carter Richter. This is the power rusher out of Wisconsin. So he's 23, which is kind of old coming out of college. And he's six foot three, which is a little short. He's kind of got like an Aaron Donald build here. A block shedding, A to C finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle. So you know he's going to come out just a monster. Good to great speed. Good to great agility. Solid to good acceleration. Solid to good strength. But honestly, what I'm most impressed by is this. This looks like a surefire talent in the draft. Almost every single core attribute has A, other than stamina. Stamina is the only thing. B to D. I'm fine with that. And we're 0-7. There's a very good chance we're drafting first or second or third. So if I get the first pick, I'm probably taking Carter Richter. And after that, I'm not sure. Anton Mason does not look good. I was talking about focusing my scouting on him, but now that I look at him, not the guy. And now that I see we are truly 0-7, I am going to trade Buda Baker. Buda Baker is the best player on this team. It feels weird to trade him, but number one, he's already an undersized strong safety, which I'm not a big fan of. 5'10 is just a little too short. He's got two years left on his deal. He's costing us a boatload of money, and he's not moving the needle. Buda Baker's going to walk in two years. I'm not going to re-sign him. We might as well get some value out of him now while we can. And the value I'm really looking for for is going to be draft picks. What team's going to be able to afford this, though? Miami Dolphins can afford it, and they need a strong safety. Dolphins are playing well, so their round one is pretty deep. Projected at 27 right now. This is a pretty aggressive highball, but I want to see what they say. You guys were saying I need to highball the shit out of trade, so this is Buda Baker for the Miami Dolphins first, second, and then next year's first second. I imagine this will not be going through. Oh my god, that is actually absurdly close. I'm going to take out that second rounder, but they... Would they do it? It's still so close. Oh my God. What if we did both first rounds and then 2024 third round? Two first rounds and a third round pick for 27 year old Buda Baker? <laughs> okay, that's a huge trade. I think this is essential to this rebuild. Buda Baker was just never a part of our Super Bowl plans, unfortunately. Unless I had a 33 year old Buda Baker out there with auto generated wide receivers and linebackers. The Arizona Cardinals send Buda Baker to the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins send a 20 2024 and 2025 first round pick as well as a 2024 third round pick keep in mind though dolphins are a good team and i just handed them a superstar strong safety so those draft picks are going to be late but i need the talent now an obvious point i did not address is we don't have a safety i guess uh i guess williams will pop up there it's i mean our defense was trash anyway but now it's just a hot dumpster fire i technically could still sign a free agent though is there anyone available look at that demonte casey is available he doesn't really want that much money Money, and he's a 77 overall. 2.35 million for a 77 overall sub in. That's great. I will absolutely take that. It's time to sim to the playoffs. Will we pull off the 0-17 season? I think that would be an accomplishment in and of itself. Also, I apologize. My Cardinals jersey is in Arizona. Oh my god! <laughs> I've never seen it before, but here it is, boys. The 0-17 season. Now, keep in mind, I actually did forget to sub Kyler back in, but I don't actually hate that. By not playing Kyler, two things happened. Number one, he didn't take a massive morale hit like everybody else did, and this might technically be more real-life accurate because nobody actually knows when Kyler Murray is coming back. Some people predict he was coming back in week 10. So Kyler Murray sits out this entire first season for Arizona. Works out great because we just tanked like absolute gods. You ever seen a team tank like that? An actual 0-17 season to kick us off. Kyler Murray can come back to starting quarterback. And the draft is up next. Now, the nice thing about this draft is, number one, we've got a lot of draft capital. We have three first-round picks. And we could virtually pick anybody. We have so many holes on this team that my strategy will be to take the best player available, even if we might not need the position. Now, quarterback is probably the only position I will not be drafting. Also, tight end. I think I'm okay. 
But I could even end up taking a halfback here. Probably I'll take one in the second or third. James Conner is just not it. Definitely need to grab some interior offensive line in the draft. I could scoop a wide receiver, but my highest priority is defensive end and corners. And low key, we should be picking up strong safety too. But keep in mind, we do have a lot of cap space. After trading Buda Baker, we've got 10 extra mil in cap space now. Freed up. We have 36 million, so we can definitely sign a big free agent too. So let me give you guys a recap of the full season. The Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen won the Super Bowl. They beat the Falcons. B. John Robinson wins Offensive Rookie of the Year, and Defensive Rookie of the Year is Brian Branch. Dak Prescott led the league in passing yards. Clayton Toon was like 31st. He really struggled. There's only one quarterback that did worse than Clayton Toon. <laughs> it's Justin Fields. Oh my god. Well, that's not true. Clayton Toon threw 13 touchdowns and 27 interceptions. He was absolutely horrible. The perfect guy for a tank. James Conner had 700 rushing yards and four touchdowns. Good God, this team is so bad. Hollywood had 800 yards on 60 receptions and six touchdowns. Trey McBride, 60 receptions, 600 yards, two touchdowns. I'm glad that him and Hollywood at least got some reps, I guess. And defensively, Zayvon Collins had 150 tackles. That's actually a ton. Probably playing a lot of defense since our offense couldn't move the ball. And BJ Ojolari had two sacks. I guess I can't complain about that. And now it's time for free agency, but I can't really decide what free agency we want until we look again at the college players. And before I sign anyone in free agency, I really need to think about the draft. One cool thing to note is Carter Richter, the left end that I've been targeting this entire time in my head, has actually bumped up to the first overall pick. Luckily, we have the first overall pick. So I don't have to trade up or do any nonsense. I can just take Carter Richter. He has great jumping, great speed, good acceleration, great agility. He was the fastest left end in 40-yard dash. So he's probably damn fast. I think that's awesome too because his archetype is actually power rusher, not speed rusher. So he's going to have good power moves, good finesse moves, good block shed. So Carter Richter just seems like he's a guaranteed bona fide talent. I'm actually glad that we didn't scout left end because I know I'm taking him anyway. The question is, what am I taking with those other two first round picks? The first corner available is actually projected at 34 right now, which is really late. So technically I could take this guy with my second round first pick. Elite acceleration is awesome great speed is also good. So he's got the intangibles I want, but his skills don't look like anything impressive. A to C block setting is interesting on a DB. A tackle, good. B to D zone, not good. C mid, like he's just, he's just mid, but all the DBs are kind of mid. Next one is Michael Friedman. He's got D man coverage, but then A zone coverage. His speed is good. His acceleration is good. I like Felix better. And the last guy that really jumps out at me is Malcolm Lucas. It's a second round strong safety, and I do want a strong safety. First in the 40-yard dash, elite speed. On top of that, A awareness, A to C block shedding, A to C hit power, A to C catching, A pursuit. D play rec is actually really bad for a strong safety. That's, that's kind of embarrassing, but this guy looks like an absolute snag in the second round. Hopefully, he's not like honey potting me, honey dicking me, and he's just a normal dev. So I have round one pick one, round one pick 16, and round one pick 19. Then we have the early pick in the second, and that's our only second round pick that we have. Have. Then we've got four picks in the third, two in the fourth, two in the fifth, and that's it. Ooh, I'm excited for this draft. <sighs> Knowing everything that we know, I want to sign a free agent wide receiver. Mike Williams does not look very interested in being a Cardinal, but technically we could sign him. Odell Beckham Jr. is excited to be a Cardinal, but I don't know if I'm excited to sign Odell Beckham Jr. Gotta work both ways. I think a center signing makes the most sense. Mitch Morse will probably only play for a year, but our center right now is a 66 overall. We gotta get somebody. Mitch Morse on a two-year deal. If he stays two years, great. We'll see if he accepts that, but he doesn't seem too interested in playing for us anyway, unfortunately. Nobody wants to play for the Cardinals. I always liked Isaiah Rogers Sr. He's very fast. He's only 26. He's normal dev, but he's not looking for too much money, and we got the cap space, so I'm gonna give him a very player-friendly deal. Hopefully, we can pick him up. I wonder if we could offer Odell just a one-year deal. Like, it's gonna cost a lot of money, but just get Kyler, like, a really nice weapon for one year. I'm basically doing exactly what the Ravens did. Let's see if we can get Odell. I'm going to give him... Oof, that's a lot of money. No, I got a lot of cap space. We can do this. <laughs> Wait, what? Dude, 150 tackles paid off. Zayvon Collins is superstar. He's superstar. He's only 75 overall, so he can't, like, hardly do anything with it. Oh my god, that's actually so funny. Looks like, um, Garrett Williams, the corner who I put at strong safety, ended up becoming a star. So when I draft a strong safety here, I can probably move him back to corner. The only player who we offered out in free agency that elected to sign was Isaiah Rogers. I can't say I blame them. 
We suck. We were 0-17. It all comes down to the draft. This is where we rebuild this lineup. We traded away Buda Baker for a first this year and a first next year, as well as a third round pick this year. So now we're going to see if it pays off. With round one, pick one, we have what you might call an absolute no-brainer in Carter Richter. We've been looking at this guy all year. The game even says right there, he's a top fit for Arizona. There's seven bullet points on player notes. That's always nice. He's 6'3", 270, power rusher, lefty out of Wisconsin. Speed is great. Jumping is great. Agility is great. Everything else is good. He was the fastest left end at the pro day and the combine, the second biggest vert. And I think the best thing about this dude is his skills chart. I have, I've rarely ever seen all A's. Now, he doesn't technically have all A's. Stamina is B to D, but this guy is a freak. To me, this is guaranteed hidden dev and probably at least 77 overall. Carter Richter out of Wisconsin. He's got 84 speed, 84 strength, 83 acceleration. All of that is like, I mean, it's actually super good. I was going to say it's average, but for a power rusher end, it's super good and he is hidden dev thank god if this dude was normal dev i was gonna cry oh whiffing the first pick would be a brutal way to start this season advancing to the next user pick we have round one pick 16. Now, there is a Clemson running back, Eric Gatson, who is available. He's got good speed, great acceleration, and there's a lot of A's in here. A to C awareness, A ball carry vision, A to C pass block, A to C spectacular catch, spin move stamina, trucking. Definitely looks like he could be a stud, but I just, I just think this team needs too many things, and I don't think taking a half back in the first round is the move. I think we could get away. You know what? I am going to take him. James Conner is not the move. We got to give Kyler Murray some weapons since this is his first starting season. I'm gonna take Eric Gatson here. Yes, thank you, Eric. Oh, I was scared. I was scared. It was too obvious of a pick. He is hidden dev. He's at least star. 92 speed, 93 acceleration, 5'11", and he is dense. 232 pounds out of Clemson. I like a Clemson guy. 80 strength out of the halfback. This guy's a beast. God damn. Eric Gatson's our pick there. And our next pick is coming up quick here. It is round one, pick 19. Now, I am going to reach on this pick. Here's why. I don't need a left tackle. I don't need a quarterback. Devin Conway out of Tennessee. He looks all right. He's got great speed, elite excel, elite agility. The great speed bothers me. Seventh for wide receivers in the 40-yard dash time. And his skills just aren't that good. He's got D, short route running. He's got F, F, medium route running. How are you a wide receiver with F, medium route running? How is that even possible? This guy is like a deep threat, but he's 5'10". I don't know. I think the position I need the most. We've got the end. I needed it. Halfback. We needed it. I need a corner. I do have to go down pretty far here to grab a corner. But the corner I liked the most was Felix Andrews. Now you look at Felix Andrews and he looks a little goofy. C catching, C press, C play rec, C man. That's wonky. A tackle, A to C block shedding. But he's the only corner in the first second round projection that actually had good speed and acceleration. The rest of these corners are going to be sitting at 86, 87 speed. I just can't do it. Felix Andrews has great speed, elite acceleration, great jumping, good strength. If he's hidden dev, this will be really, really good. If he's normal dev, this will be a horrendous pick. Uh, Felix, don't you let me down, Felix Andrews. Let's go. God, give this guy an award for the ugliest fucking... Like, they need to do something about these face scans, bro. Who looks like that? I've never met a human being who looks like that. But Felix Andrews has 94 speed and 94 acceleration, which is exactly why we took him. I'm a little scared to see his coverages. I have to imagine they're pretty bad. But it's another Clemson guy, actually. We're pairing Felix up with his teammate. That's how we're doing. Him and Eric, they go they go way back. I got three hidden dev players in my first three picks in the first round. You expect to get hidden dev in the first round, but I'm really, really happy. And our next user pick is at the very start of the second round. And after this, it's the start of the third. So this is a pretty important pick here. Devontae Bridge, the Missouri running back, has jumped 112. Holy shit. 112. I don't need a halfback though, so I can't, I can't do it. The strong safety I really liked is still available. The five Five nine strong safety out of UCF. I was talking shit about Buda Baker for being 5'10", and I'm about to draft a guy even shorter. I like him because his speed is elite. I know speed's not the only thing, but he also has good skills. I see a lot of A's in here for a second round guy. A awareness, A to C block shed, A pursuit. B zone coverage is nice. The worst thing here is play rack. I mean, his finesse moves are dog shit, but who cares? Play rack's a little bad, but Malcolm Lucas is fast. 
fast. And he's not even that fast. Damn. All right, that's the first big whiff right there. Normal dev. And he's only 93 speed, so he's really not as fast as I was hoping. Hopefully, he's a high overall. That's really the only thing that salvages this pick right here. 88 Excel, 88 Agility, 85 Jumping, 83 Change Direction. Not so strong. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Not looking good. That was not a good pick. Round three, pick one. I'm going to grab a wide receiver here. We did our scouting on wide receiver because I knew I was going to take somebody. Marquise Keenan. He's six foot two, so he's big. I like that because right now we got Hollywood who's five foot nine. Speed doesn't look great. His physicals really don't look great. But we're sitting here in the third round. I got to get Kyler a wide receiver. Damn. Marquise Keenan. Listen, he's 6'2". He could develop well. 90 speed, 91 Excel is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was really hoping we'd finesse a little hidden dev there in that third round. We do have a lot of round three picks, though, so we can still make up for this. I'm going to take Kyle Triplett, a guard here. Offensive line's horrible. He actually has, like, really good physicals. His skills are pretty solid, too. Too. To get a good guard this late, I'd be shocked. Oh, that is massive. Damn, that is actually massive. Out of Oklahoma is a hidden dev guard in the third round. That's massive. That's huge. We needed that right there. And now we're up with round three, pick 16. I almost want to go for a guy like that again. I will. I'm going to take another guard. What are the odds that we smoke two amazing guards in a row? Probably not that high. But take a look at his skills. I mean, there's a third, fourth round guard with A, impact block, A to C lead, B, pass, A to C finesse. This is the deepest guard class. Why are there so many good guards in the third round? Let's go. 90 strength, 82 acceleration. He's even got 79 jumping. For whatever reason, you would need that as a guard. That is two hidden dev guards. Ooh, we fixed that O-line like it was nothing, man. That's huge. Now, I still don't have a center. This is true. I don't have a center. Next guy I'm going to pick up here is Kevin Weeks. A lot of good player notes on him. Speed is great for a D-tackle. Skills don't look excellent, but I would like to get a D-tackle. We have nobody on the D-line. I've only drafted one D-lineman. So pick up Kevin Weeks here. He is a normal dev, unfortunately. 88 strength, 80 excel, though. Wow, 74 speed? You were that? Great speed is 74 for a D-tackle. I guess they are D-tackles. Speed rush out of San Diego State. Doesn't look like anything fancy. We'll just have to see how he pans out. This will be my final user pick right here. I'm wondering if there is a halfway decent center I can grab right now. Now these are day three guys. I only like Dave Hart because he's flown up the board. I'm just gonna take another corner. Get Xavier Ridgeway out of Missouri. 90 speed, 92 excel. Doesn't look anything fancy himself either. And that's gonna be our final user pick. I like to let the computer sim some picks as well. It's fun to see if they can just pull some crazy shit out of their hat. I know for a fact we ourselves got five hidden devs. My three first round picks were hidden devs. My second round picks were actually all whiffs, it seems like. But then my third round came back to hidden dev. The most important thing is we check the draft recap. Okay, boys. The draft recap. Look at those first four picks. 77, 78, 78, 77. Let's go. Carter Richter is just as good as we imagined. 77 overall, 84 speed. He's a beast. And the halfback we picked up, Eric Gatson. I was really scared making this pick, but it definitely ended up being the right call. Eric Gatson is a 78 overall, super high overall with 92 speed, 93 excel. That's a really good card. And Felix Andrews, this was not a reach. Felix Andrews is a dog. We had to go pretty far down the draft board to get him, but 78 overall, 94 speed, 94 Excel. Beast, man. Beast. I was kind of worried about his coverages. What are they? 77 tackle, 74 play rec, 70 man, 79 zones. He's his own corner for sure. Listen, 94 speed, 94 Excel is what I'm looking for, man. Damn, Malcolm Lucas. This back-to-back -back was nasty. Malcolm Lucas was absolutely a stud too. It's our first pick of the second round. 93 speed, 88 Excel. Set hit power. Oh, he's a zone corner too. Shit, I guess we're running zone. Hit power is 83. That's actually good. All right, bet. What else we got in here, boys? Ooh, yeah. Mark Marquise Keenan, this wide receiver, this was our first big whiff. He's normal dev, and he sucks. If I'm being honest, he's a 69 overall with 90 speed. Doesn't look like I'm going to get a lot of value out of that, so that was a whiff. Kyle Triplett, the right guard, so he's only a 71 overall, but he's hidden dev. And then Dwayne Scott, 73 overall, also hidden dev. So this, these were amazing picks. Uh, Kevin Weeks was normal dev. He's a 70 overall. He's just all right. Uh, Ridgeway, not a good pick. 68 overall, 90 speed. And then it gets into what the CPU took. CPU got a 66, 63, 65, 66. I mean, they didn't have a lot to work with. I don't blame them. Um, they did grab us a center, Tyler Cruz. I mean, technically, I should click on these guys and see if they're hidden dev, right? Like, there's a chance they're hidden dev, even though they suck. No, it doesn't look like any of them are. Oh my God. I was 
wrong. Bernard Sandridge, the rookie out of Ohio State. This was the first CPU auto pick. He's hidden depth, which means he's star. I mean, I can't imagine there was a superstar that deep, but 83 speed, 83 excel. He will actually pair quite nicely with Carter Richter. He's a very low overall, but at least he's hidden depth. Huge, huge, huge. This is awesome. Avante Maddox is available in free agency for cheap. I'm going to grab him as well. And here is your new look Arizona Cardinals. Ladies and gentlemen, I see a lot of hidden devs. Eric Gatson, Dwayne Scott, Kyle Triplett, and even Cruz there in the middle, although he is normal dev. Defensively, you got Sandridge auto picked by the CPU. You got Carter Richter, our round one pick one. You got Felix Andrews. Felix Andrews is actually an 80 overall at strong safety, but Malcolm Lucas will be there. Uh, Felix Andrews, our CB1, picked up Avante Maddox in free agency, as well as Isaiah Rogers in free agency. So we really bolstered the secondary. Xavier Collins got himself the superstar. That's so awesome from 150 tackles last season. Thompson's doing well. I think we're in a really good spot here. The only thing I need to do is make sure that Hollywood is my slot wide receiver. Gotta go make sure I, I sub that back in. One thing I'm so excited to see is if any of these players are actually superstar. Now, I look at hidden dead players, I usually assume star, but any one of these guys could be superstar. Most likely, probably Richter, but like, you never know, man. I guess technically they could be superstar X Factor too. You get like one or two of those every draft. Oh no, I forgot to show the entire draft class. No. Oh, is there any way I can go back? I can't go back. Guys, I'm so sorry. I forgot to check that. I'm going to go through the teams right now and find the studs that we missed. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. Just found this dude, Darius Kinder. I don't know when he was picked, but holy shit. 83 overall. He's 91 speed, 93 XL. Damn. They got 99 juke move. I'm going to check. I'm going to check his dev trait. If this dude's an X Factor, I'm going to cry. Oh, he's only star. He's only star. Okay. It wasn't a very deep quarterback class. The best quarterback was Brandon Feldman here. He actually has a somewhat realistic face scan. I respect that. With 90, he's got a cannon. 95 throw power, 70 speed. He's not exactly fast. Ooh, and he's a superstar. Commander's got themselves a stud. The best wide receiver was Devin Conway. I, I actually had an opportunity to take this guy. Ooh, that was a whiff, especially considering the wide receiver I drafted was horrible. Devin Conway, 93 speed, 94 excel. Why do I look at this? This is just gonna piss me off when he's superstar. Fuck! <laughs> He's superstar. Oh. All right. Hey, we got to target wide receivers in the next draft. No question. Kyler Kyler needs a stud wide receiver. Well, I'm really sorry, guys, for not checking that. I'll make sure I do it next season. But we saw some of the studs. I hope that suffices a little bit. I got all excited, you know. And midseason, we're not looking that much better. We are one and six. But hey, we have a win. And that is an upgrade from last season. One and six Cardinals. I'm not super geeked about that. But we're still really young. Not that talented. And I still have two first round picks in this this upcoming draft. So I think we grab a wide receiver. Maybe we grab more O-line or another corner. We're in the wild card. We are, we are third in the NFC West and we are in the wild card. Wait, the Rams are 11 and 6, the Niners are 13 and 4. How did we make the wild card? First off, let's take a look at our team. Let's take a look at these dev traits. They should all be unlocked by now. I was trying to process what I just saw. Gatson, he either earned it or it must have been his dev trait. Eric Gatson, even though he wasn't the best halfback in the class. Ended up being a really good pick. He is an 83 overall. He's already got abilities. Once again, I don't know if abilities matter at all in Sim, um, but I'm going to give him goal line back and reach for it, I guess. But Eric Gatson already having a really good season. 92 speed, 93 excel. Looks like morale is low on the team, so we must have lost. We must have won a ton of games and then lost a few there at the end. Kyler Murray's morale is up high. Kyler's looking good. His accuracies are all up high, but he's still not superstar. Hollywood's up to an 88 overall. And then Dwayne Scott and Triplett were both star dev, Humphreys and Paris Johnson. So O-line looks good. Yeah, they, they look fine. I can move Trey McBride up in the depth chart. He's developing really well, up to an 80 overall. And defensively, we drafted, we either drafted or one of these dudes won defensive rookie of the year. We drafted three superstars, Eric Gatson, Felix Andrews, Carter Richter. Now keep in mind, there are bugs in Madden where there's a desired amount of star and superstar players. So sometimes they kind of like shuffle these when they shouldn't. So I wonder if I got a favorable shuffle or if I actually just drafted gods. It's kind of hard to say. Left end is Carter Richter. He is superstar. I'm not shocked about this one. 
He definitely deserves it. And to give him instant rebate, defensive rally. Carter Richter, dude. He's out of Wisconsin, too. He's like a little JJ Watt. Love this dude. He's a beast. So Carter Richter developing well. And Felix Anderson. Felix Anderson was that corner we had our eyes on the whole draft, pretty much. 21 out of Clemson. He's ugly as shit, but he can play ball, baby. 95 speed, 95 excel. Everybody else just had an average season. Sandridge is star 70 overall, week 72. Okay. Young and developing, but we're certainly not there yet. I mean, the fact that we made the wild card is actually ridiculous. I think we're going to get shit on by this Cowboys team, but let's find out. I do want to see stats around the league, though. Kyler Murray finishes fifth in passing yards. That Dallas Cowboys offensive scheme is kind of OP. 32 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 4,210 yards. Rushing. Gatson had 958, five touchdowns. Kyler had 532 and four. Kyler was scrambling, man. And James Conner still punched in five, which is impressive considering he's the backup. How, dude, two players over 1,000. Marquise Keenan was one of them. Hollywood, 1,276 and nine touchdowns. Eight for Rondale Moore. Five for Zach Ertz. Looks like Zach Ertz accidentally became the starter again. Thought I turned depth chart reader off, but that's okay. I'm really not that worried about that. Didn't change much for me. Defensively, Zayvon Collins puts up another huge tackle. Season six TFLs and four interceptions and three sacks. Holy shit. If Carter Richter didn't win Defensive Player of the Year, he sacks as a rookie? Carter Richter's a demon. This is on Arizona Cardinals Defensive Playbook, by the way. I didn't switch it. 16 TFLs, 15 sacks. Kevin Weeks had 10 TFLs, six and a half sacks. Jesus, you guys, this is amazing. I'm so happy for Richter. Richter had to have won Defensive Player of the Year, right? Let's take a look. Kyler was seventh in MVP voting. I respect that. We are uh, an NFC team. We're an NFC team. We got fourth in Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year is Aaron Donald. Look at this fucking dude. Carter Richter is fourth in Defensive Player of the Year voting. He had to have won Defensive Rookie of the Year. Carter Richter. Bryce Montgomery was next. Damian Griffin. I mean, it was round one pick one, so he's really supposed to be the best player. But still, that's just so sick how hard he went. And Marquise Keaton, very close to Offensive Rookie of the Year. Doesn't get it though. Brandon Feldman gets it. That was the quarterback we were looking at earlier. The best quarterback in the draft. Uh, best wide receiver was Cup. Best D lineman, Aaron Donald. Best linebacker, Rashawn Gary. Best DB, AJ Terrell. Hey, I'm proud of our squad. Honest to God, the fact that we're even here is hilarious. We shouldn't be here. Obviously, I don't have high hopes going into this game. And this is almost like kind of bad because our pick is less valuable now. That's not a good way to think of it. I mean, I tanked the shit out of that first season, so. Game starts. I mean, it, a Cinderella story could happen. It's seven to seven, 14 to seven, 14 to 14. There's no way we pull this off. Holy shit. Oh no, 21, 21. Shit. 28-21. 28-28. Oh my God. Wait a minute. Slow this. Oh my God. We're winning. We're fucking winning. There's no way. Second and 10. There is no way we pull this off. That's a bunch of bullshit. There's no way. Dak finds CeeDee Lamb. Nice catch. Dak's dropping back. Throws over the middle. I think that's... Who is that? They don't have Dalton Schultz anymore. I don't know who that is. First and 10. Pollard out the backfield. Does he throw it? He does. It's going to get out of bounds. Holy shit. Will this game go to OT? We got three superstars on defense. Felix Anderson, Carter Richter, Zayvon Collins. Third and one. They take a timeout there. They have one timeout left. They are kind of in field goal range here. So it's either going OT or they're scoring a touchdown. Damn, Dak is getting that ball out fast. They're going no huddle. Preserving their timeout. Dak goes end zone. Oh, not end zone, but over the middle laser. Dude, the wild card. There's no way. We don't beat the, we don't beat the Cowboys here, right? Dude, if he turns this ball over, though, like he throws a pick. <gasps> Second and six. They still haven't called the timeout. What are you doing? Play action. Laser. Early breakup from Collins. Damian Collins turned out to be a savage. Now, they kind of have a gimme. Coach is going to ice him here. And the Cowboys got to come out and kick this. He's going to hit this, though. It's a 30-yarder. No way you missed that. All right, he drills it. We're going into, we're literally going into overtime. Cowboys win the toss. I think Dallas just beat us on a field goal. Oh no, they scored. Game winning touchdown from Dak Prescott. Damn. It honestly would have been insane. It would have been insane if we pulled that off at the end. Kyler had a great game. 30 for 42, three touchdowns and interception. Played just as good as Dak. 31 to 37, we're losing the wild card. Shouldn't have even been there. So that's a great season for us. And now maybe some free agents will actually want to sign with us since we're not 0 and 17. So that could be nice for that. Come say, come say hi in the video. You look awesome. I love your hair. Show them what you made. This is, we're doing the, this is the Arizona Cardinals rebuild. I actually just made the wild card. It's kind of crazy. Uh, what'd you bring? Um, this is. Holy shit. Apple cider, cinnamon, champagne made. Apple cider, cinnamon, champagne drink she made. Apple caramel, cinnamon. Apple caramel, cinnamon. That's, That's caramel and cinnamon. That's an apple. That's champagne. That's champagne. And apple cider. And apple cider. 
Holy shit, what is that? Show them. Give them the, put it to the camera. Holy shit, I have super girlfriend, bro. This is fucking lit. I made potato and bacon cheddar stuffed chicken. Guys, please remember, be a loser. Sit in your room and play video games all day, and this could be your life. Some of you guys, you don't have the grind set that I have. You go to the gym, you go outside, you touch grass, you drink water, you talk to people in real life. That's pussy shit. If you want to be an alpha male like me and bag up baddie who will cook you dinner and bring you apples, champagne, <laughs> vinegar, cider, champagne, wine, you have to sit in your room and rebuild the Arizona fucking Cardinals. Do you understand? Mm, Carter Richter is Superstar X Factor after winning Defensive Rookie of the Year. Holy shit. Holy shit. This guy's a monster. He absolutely won Defensive Rookie of the Year. He has the upgrades for it, too. He gets, I think he has two skill point upgrades there for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Carter Richter. Oh my god, you're a freak. That's why you go 0-17, boys. You get Carter Richter. How funny would it be if we re-signed Buda Baker? Buda Baker is now available in free agency. When you really think about it, we turned Buda Baker into Carter Richter and whatever first-round pick we take this year. So I still think that was a very good call. I wouldn't hate signing an expensive guard like Batonio. Look at our cap room. Our cap room's insane. I'm going to take the best free agents we can here. I'll start with Batonio. I'm going to give him a strong deal just because we have the cap for it. And I could end up moving one of my rookies to center so that Batonio actually remains at guard. He's always ends up being available in free agency and he's really good. So happy to pick him up there. Amari Cooper. Damn, he's old, man. Amari Cooper is kind of old, but this would take the stress out of drafting a wide receiver. No, 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 no. We're not winning a Super Bowl next year. Amari Cooper's too old. Greg Newsom is available. He's 25. What are you doing in free agency? I'm going to try and get Jeremiah Wusukaramoa, though. He's 25. He's star dev. This is a very, Jesus, this is a long deal. A seven year deal for Karamoa, but he's available. I'm going to offer him a lot of money here. See if we can sway him in our direction because I could use an outside linebacker. I do still want to draft a wide receiver, so I'm not going to pick up Amari Cooper here. I wouldn't hate getting a guy like Elijah Moore. Those are some pretty big offers already. I'm going to go for Amari Cooper. Shit, if I have three insane wide receivers, I'll take it. But I'm going to go for Amari Cooper. We have the cap space for this. There's no reason we should not do this. Give me a very player-friendly offer. This is a big free agency for the Cardinals. And we have two first-round draft picks. And we made the wild card. We might win the Super Bowl on this third year, which I was not anticipating at all. After free agency, we do get Batonio. And I'm going to move Dwayne Scott to center. Entire offensive line is starting. Dev. Batonio was a huge signing. Amari Cooper also elects to sign with the Arizona Cardinals. So we actually have like pretty good wide receivers now. Marquise Brown has developed well. Rondale Morris up to an 85. And then Amari Cooper's an 89. So that looks really good. We got a superstar running back in the backfield. I'm going to move Zach Ertz to my starting fullback. He's actually pretty good there. Kyler's doing well, of course. And then defensively, the only free agent who didn't sign with us was Jeremiah owusu karamoa I offered him like an eight-year deal with crazy money and he still didn't take it. Some people just can't be bought out, I guess. Also, interesting to know, Majai Sanders, apologies if I butchered that, he went up to star dev during the season. Once again, I don't really know how this happened. I think it has something to do with the desired dev traits in the game, but I'm going to move him to my starting right outside linebacker now. He will start over Cameron Thomas. The question now is, of course, what are we targeting in the draft? Currently, we have good wide receivers, but Amari Cooper is probably only going to stick around for a year or two. So technically, I could go for wide receiver again after we whiffed last year. I could definitely go for a linebacker. Collins is great. Ojolari's all right. And then Sanders and Cam Thomas are just not that good. I don't want free safety. I'm chilling there. We could take an end or a D tackle. We could definitely take a corner as well. I think I, I probably need corner the most. My corners just aren't it. Felix Andrews is awesome, but then it's Isaiah Rogers and Marco Wilson. But of course, we did have a pretty good season this year. So our first pick is actually round one, pick 18. Let's see who's available here. AJ Christian. This is a six foot corner out of Colorado with A catching. C-man, A to C zone. But most importantly, great speed, elite excel, elite agility, A catch. I mean, this guy's a beast. This guy really should be a beast. We gotta hope he's hitting dev. But AJ Christian is gonna be our first pick. We will pick up a DB. We did great on it last draft. AJ Christian, 93 speed, 94 excel, six foot, love the height, a lot, a lot taller than Felix. And he's got hidden dev and he is flexing absolutely no bicep muscle there. But I, look at that. He flexes it and it just, yeah. AJ Christian. Christian, though. We got a Colorado player. He played under prime time. I love that. Our next pick is round two, pick 19. Did I do something wrong? Wasn't I supposed to have two picks in this? Oh, the Cardinals don't have their own round one? 
in... I'm honestly super confused. I thought I had two first round picks in this draft. We're going to make do with what we got. Here's Mike Rutledge out of LSU. I do kind of want to go D-line here. Is a wide receiver available, but he's too sketchy to me. Okay, marginal speed sucks, but he is an edge rusher, so it doesn't matter that much. A block shedding is amazing. A play rec is amazing. It's a power rusher with C power moves. Uh, it's a bit of a gamble, but I don't like any of my other options. Hidden dev. I love you. I love you, Mike. I love you. Mike Rutledge. Really hoping his overall is high. But with 74 speed, I don't know. 90 strength, 85 acceleration. That's an interesting... That's an interesting player right there. This San Jose State wide receiver, Monte Woodbury, flying up the draft boards. Great speed, great excel. I'm just gonna try it. I whiffed on wide receiver last time. Hey, okay, he's actually fast as shit. But I still... I'm just so... I'm just... I just whiff on... I'm just... I just whiff on wide receivers. It's just what I do, I guess. I am... I have double whiffed on wide receivers. That's the third round. I can't be that mad at myself. I'm gonna let the CPU take over for four, five, six, and seven. And don't worry, I'm gonna show the entire draft on this draft recap. I'm so sorry. I forgot to do it last time. I was too excited. I was too excited. I saw Carter Richter at all those 77s, 78s, and I just... Draft recap! Oh my god! Okay. So we're a little more top-heavy on this draft. Obviously, we had less picks, but our first two are both 79s? Wait, what? Who is this? What happened? Oh my god, I did have two first-round picks. I did have two first-round picks. It looks like, did the game auto-pick me or did I? Bro, I must have clicked the wrong button or something. I think I accidentally had the game auto-pick for me. I did not choose this dude. Holy shit. I didn't whiff on wide receivers accidentally. I accidentally didn't whiff. Quincy Overstreet, the 5'11 Bama rookie. Hidden dev wide receiver with 93 speed, 94 acceleration. Granted, we just signed Amari Cooper. So we are like seriously, seriously loaded at wide receiver. I might actually trade somebody now. Shit, I might trade Amari Cooper. I signed him. Now I'm trading him. That would be weird. But Quincy Overstreet. And then AJ Christian out of Colorado is a 79 overall too. So our, our first two picks were incredible. I manually took Christian. I did not manually take over street. Mike Rutledge, not as high an overall as I was hoping for, but he's still a 73 overall. Um, he will definitely be a day one starter and he's hidden dev, so star or superstar. Monte Woodbury's dog shit. I mean, he's fast, but he's 68 overall. That was a whiff. The computer took Jeff Garfield, a left guard, 73 overall. Are you hidden dev by chance? You are normal dev. That's okay. Cordell Knight, free safety. He doesn't look too fancy. Trent Turner, 71 overall, normal dev. I thought this was going to say Burt Macklin, Brandon Macklin. Tight end, he's dog shit. Okay, well, let's take a look at the entire draft. Let's see it, boys. Did we make any major whiffs? So the very first overall pick was a corner, Carlos Blakely. This is a very deep corner draft. There's a lot of good corners. There was Ralph Moore in that left tackle. Damian Lindsay, 79 overall wide receiver. 80 overall wide. Wow, a lot of good wide receivers too. Corner, corner. 74, 79. A lot of 74s here. 79. Oh, and then here's us. AJ Christian over street. Holy shit, this stretch was monstrous. This is a huge draft. Brandon Boston goes to Tennessee. Blaine Burr tight end. 80 overall goes to the Bengals. So the best overalls in the whole draft were all 80 overalls. You got Blakely, Frazier, Blaine Burr, Matt McClain, Cordell Taylor. These were all first round picks. So no crazy sleepers. Then the 79 overalls were also all first round picks. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. The first total sleeper was Caleb Hilliard, halfback in the third round. 78 overall. Fastest player in the draft was Sean Kirkpatrick, a 75 overall wide receiver who went in the fifth round. I actually, I'm so happy with that draft. That's huge. AJ Christian's gonna be a huge impact player. The problem is like, what do we do with Quincy Overstreet? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep Hollywood as wide receiver one. I'm gonna let Overstreet be the third string and Amari Cooper is the second string. Next year, we'll reevaluate. Maybe Overstreet will develop so quickly that he, um, that he needs to be the second string or even the first string. Probably not. Not, it's possible. But we have a nice mix here. We have a middle age wide receiver. We have a veteran wide receiver. And we have a super good young wide receiver. So this is, I mean, it's amazing. Carter Richter still a god. And then Sandridge is going to come out for Mike Rutledge. Mike Rutledge is actually already a higher overall than Sandridge, even after a full season. So that's the right call there. This new Cardinals team is an 84 overall with an 87 offense. Got a new hidden dev wide receiver in Overstreet and a hidden dev right end in Mike Rutledge, as well as our hidden dev DB, AJ Christian. I'm really excited about him, man. I think he's going to be a freak. I'll move AJ Christian up in the depth chart here. 
player. I'll make him CB2. Malcolm Lucas, still just a good player. Was unable to pick up a linebacker in free agency or the draft. So it's something we can kind of start to target here. I, I'm just not worried about it right now. I'm really not. I kind of like how our team is at. Let's sim the midseason, see how we're doing. At midseason, we have a winning record. We're four and three. Felix Andrews unlocks a new ability. We've got a breakout DB to upgrade dev trade. Hopefully it's Felix Andrews, which would take him to superstar X Factor. Who is this breakout DB? Have you been watching Jalen Thompson? Oh my God. Wait, it's our free safety. So we got to hold the bucks to less than 150 or get Jalen Thompson, two plus INT, or his fumbles, TFL sacks. Bet. That's huge. That's huge. So I can't step in and play that. Hopefully the team can do it. Uh, and then Felix Andrews must have gone up and overall, he has. He now has three ability slots. God, he's such a beast, bro. Overstreet has still not unlocked his dev trait. Neither has Rutledge. But I think that... Whoa, 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 whoa. AJ Christian has. AJ Christian has. And he's a superstar. AJ Christian is superstar. Once again, I feel like this has something to do with the desired dev traits in Madden. Because I just don't think it's that realistic to draft this many superstars. What I think is happening is the league already has the maximum amount of star dev players. So it's just making him, if he was supposed to be star, it's just making him superstar. That's what I think. Either way, I'm not going to complain about it. Because he's insane. Richter, still God. And Rutledge, yet to unlock his either. But... Great start to the season. Let's sim to the playoffs. We should make them. <laughs> Damn. Cardinals only lose three more games in the entire season. 11 and 6. We lead the NFC West. But our overall really isn't that high. We're super good on offense. 84 on defense. I got to keep I gotta keep targeting defense in these drafts and free agency. Would love to get a stud linebacker. I would really like to get that. Overstreet unlocked his dev trait. It was star. And defensively looks like, oh, unfortunately, Jalen Thompson did not get his dev trait upgrade, but that's okay. We need a D tackle and an outside linebacker. We get those two things and this team is Super Bowl bound. Um, Not that we're not right now, but I just, I don't see us making it all the way to the bowl here, but I would love to be pleasantly surprised. First and foremost, let's look around the league, baby. Kyler is seventh in the NFL this year in passing yards. He actually regressed in passing yards a little bit. Gatson had a much bigger season, 1,300 yards and 15 touchdowns. Damn, he's becoming really good. Marquise Brown is the only receiver to eclipse 1,000 yards on the team. Interestingly, Overstreet at wide receiver three appears to be getting more looks than Amari Cooper at wide receiver two. He got 12 touchdowns as well. Keep in mind, this is Dallas Cowboys. Keep in mind, this is Dallas Cowboys offensive playbook, so that must have something to do with it, but it's good for me. I mean, Overstreet actually probably has a good shot at offensive rookie of the year here with these stats. So, so we'll see how that goes. McBride had a solid season. And defensively, Zayvon Collins continues to put up excellent numbers. Interceptions, TFL, sacks, and leads the team in tackles. Carter Richter regresses from his rookie year a little bit as well. He gets 10 sacks. But still, it's incredible. And honestly, Richter's already a superstar X Factor, so I don't even care. You can do whatever you want, man. You're going to be insane. Uh, Weeks got four sacks. Cameron Thomas got four sacks. Three and a half for Rutledge. Okay. Kyler is sixth in MVP voting. Offensive rookie of the year, at least for the NFC is Quincy Overstreet. It was our second overall pick. That's huge. I'm really, really glad we're in there. Doesn't look like we're getting defensive rookie of the year. AJ Christian got fourth. He got fourth, but he got outplayed by Marquise Thomas, Ralph Moore, and Harvey Townsend. Christian's sixth in best DB, though, so he had a really, really good season. AJ Christian did. 87 overall Cardinals taking on the 89 overall Commanders in the wild card. We couldn't get past the wild card last season, but that season we were 9-8. and eight. This season we're 11-6. and six. We're, we're a much better team this season. We should be able to get through the wild card. Commanders start out with a touchdown and stop us and get another. Oh my God, we're getting, we're getting smacked. Holy shit. Okay, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, we're getting, no, we're getting shit on. 17-31, 38-17, 24-38. The wild card is our nemesis, bro. Wow, well, it's our best season yet, but dude, we took the Cowboys to OT last year. This year, we get dicked on. Hey, keep your head up, boys. Keep your head up, Cardinals. We're gonna make big boy moves in free agency. We're gonna draft Brandon Feldman. He was the best quarterback in the draft when I took Carter Richter. 18 for 26. I think Kyler outplayed it. I don't know how his QBR is better. Okay, wait, no. Somebody needs to explain this QBR shit to me because Kyler threw more yards, better completion percentage, same touchdowns. Is it because he threw more? We bottled the run up real well, although I guess he did get two touchdowns, um, but Eric Gatson couldn't go anywhere either. Um, Mari Cooper's 14 for 160, and then Hollywood's 13 for 162. Our rookie, Quincy Overstreet, 
nowhere to be seen in the big game. The lights were too bright. Niners win the bowl. Brock Purdy wins Super Bowl MVP in 2025, but Quincy Overstreet does get Offensive Rookie of the Year, so that's huge. Huge for him. Headed into free agency, we've got 71 million to throw around. And when you look at the roster, there's really only two holes. Okay, offensive line, beautiful. It's so good. My tight end's all right. Okay, so if there was like a George Kittle, maybe. But Hollywood, whoa, 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 whoa. Amari Cooper regressed, but Kyler, Hollywood and Overstreet are superstar. Oh my God. Holy shit, we're winning the bowl. We're winning the bowl. Felix Andrews is X Factor. Jalen Thompson does leave in free agency, as does Majai Sanders. So we're short of free safety and outside linebacker. Rutledge regresses to normal dev. So my D-line's looking weak other than Richter. My DBs are probably some of the best in the league now with AJ Christian and Felix Andrews. We've got a few things to pick up though. Damn, Overstreet. I didn't even realize Overstreet was a dog like that. I'm glad we got Amari Cooper though. We got so many weapons. I wonder if we could get Jalen Thompson back and give him a mega deal. I would really like to just have him back. He is the best free safety and free agency. He has no interest in our squad. I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw Jalen Thompson so much money. He doesn't have a choice. TJ Edwards is available. Like I said, we definitely need a right outside linebacker. So I'm gonna give him an excellent offer. One that hopefully he can't refuse. BJ Hill shows a little bit of interest in the squad and he would just be a nice depth pickup. Not, uh, not gonna be a high impact player on our squad. Jordan Fuller is interested in being an Arizona Cardinal. I'm gonna give him a player friendly deal. I know he's already interested in the team, so I don't really have to do this, but this is kind of my safety net. Oh, actually the Cowboys have a pretty aggressive offer out here for him. I'm gonna make a more aggressive offer than what I did originally. And honestly, we end up getting everybody we were looking for in free agency. TJ Edwards signs. Jalen Thompson comes back. I did not expect that. I thought he was gonna take a different offer. And then BJ Hill at D tackle. Um, Our right end situation is still not great great in this draft here i wouldn't mind a really good right end pair with carter richter it's actually it's like it's really hard to say what i would draft here maybe i draft a tight end honestly i probably just trade my picks there's nothing i need i think i'm gonna trade my picks away i don't know what i would draft here let's see if i can trade for a really good right end so we signed jordan fuller but we don't need him so i'll put him in here and i'm gonna offer up our first round pick as well as our six and seven let's see if we can get an absolute monster out of this look at this the nine Niners have Carlos Cardona. He's 24. He's 80 overall. Mm, no, I want an impact player right now. Bengals have Miles Murphy. He's 86 overall, 24. He's going to be a freak. So Mike Rutledge and my sixth and seventh rounder for Miles Murphy. I assume they say no here. Oh, put him over cap. They're already over cap. That's on them. Look at this Chargers left end. Julian Bass, 84 overall superstar. Damn, this guy's a beast. I'm offering Rutledge around six and seven. I assume they don't take this, but let's see how much more they want. I'm going to offer a 2028 20, round two. That is far in the future. It's actually really close. Dra Trades are crazy, bro. Trades are too easy in these games. I swear. I'm going to offer up a 2027 20, round five as well. 2027 20, round four, baby. I offer an absolute haul of late round picks. A sixth, a seventh, a fifth, a fourth, and a 2028 20, second round. Plus Mike Rutledge, who has regressed to normal dev for superstar Julian Bassey. So this is really just to add a guy that can pair with Carter Richter, uh, which is exactly what I wanted. We're going to have two freaks off either side. It's going to be it's gonna be a shitty time to be an opposing quarterback. Let's put it that way. And honestly, I was saying I got to part ways with draft picks. I mean, I still have all my draft picks for this draft here. So Julian Bassey, I'm going to switch him to a right end. Doesn't really matter, but now we head into the draft. Dude, I honestly have so many positions shored up, but it's like, what would I take here? It looks like there's two good quarterbacks available. Don't see any reason I take that. Wouldn't hate a linebacker because TJ Edwards is old. TJ Edwards is definitely old. Linebacker might be the move. Let's take a linebacker. MLB Matthew Burst out of Arizona. Elite jumping, elite agility, great acceleration. A man, a play rack. This is an interesting linebacker. Definitely going to take him. 86 speed, 90 excel, 88 agility. Matthew Burst out of Arizona State. Hidden dev, of course. You love to see that. I'll put him at MLB two for now. Obviously, no one's starting over Zayvon Collins. Uh, BJ Ojolari is good. Yeah, I don't have too, I don't have too much for him. Now, the best case scenario here for round two pick 20 is going to be a D-tackle. There's a nice D-tackle available. Kenya Bates, Junior Keaton. It's like there's some wide receivers. I'm down deep and there's no D-tackles. Carlos Walker fell like crazy. I'm just going to take positional availability. I'm going to take the best thing that's actually sitting here. And I think that's going to be wide receiver Kenya Bates out of Florida State. Great speed. 
Great strength. Six foot three. Do I need a wide receiver? No, but I finally drafted a hidden dev wide receiver. He'll he'll fill in for Amari Cooper because Amari Cooper's retiring pretty soon here. Uh, and Hollywood's Hollywood's actually getting there, which is weird to say. 93 speed, 80 excel, six foot three. It's a really good wide receiver. All right, I'm letting the CPU do the rest of this. I trust in the CPU. I actually got two hidden dev studs, so I'm gonna chill. Let's get a draft recap and let's win a Super Bowl this year. That's my goal. The greatest feeling, the draft recap here we go baby oh okay okay it's not our fanciest draft but damn the cpu's auto pick linebacker glenn blackshear really solid 87 speed kenya bates the wide receiver 93 he's a 75 and our first round pick matthew burst a 74 it's not that good we got the same overall linebacker in the third round and then uh tompkins hatback trash and goodrich is trash let's see about the whole league yo there was an 84 overall holy that's actually the highest overall i've ever seen the very first pick was julius banks a probably a generational wide receiver 96 speed 94 excel let's see dude's bald as shit he's, he's 90 years old coming out of college uh, Superstar X Factor. Are you Superstar X Factor? Holy shit. This guy is a freak. Julius Banks. Oh my God. Ah, that guy's a freak. Okay, looking at the rest of the draft, there's an 80 overall wide receiver, Victor Richards, right here. 78 corner, Richard Hanna. 77 wide receiver, Walter Lucas. 78 wide receiver, Henry Lucas, his brother, I assume. Damn. Okay, well, this don't feel like I whiffed on anything too crazy. I went 84, then 80, and there's a bunch of 78s. Ben Pitts, middle linebacker, but he was taken fourth. Troy Stapleton, halfback. Doesn't look like there's any crazy linebackers I whiffed on. Looks like Deontay Barden was the middle linebacker, 77 overall out of Georgia. So that would have been a better pick probably than what I took. Fastest player in the draft was that first pick, Julius Banks. Damn. I'm going to go back to our squad super quick. I want to take a look at Glenn Blackshear. Was he hitting dev? Glenn Blackshear was hidden dev. So we actually got two hidden dev linebackers, 87 speed, 91 excel. That's awesome. That almost makes you feel like maybe we don't. Like I'll sign a dude in free agency and then we draft and it's like I got, got a better. <laughs> it's almost like I got a better option. We just have depth basically because Zayvon Collins is obviously my starting middle linebacker. My backup now can be Matthew Burst. And then at outside linebacker, my backup to Edwards can be Glenn Blackshear. And then my left outside linebacker should be BJ Ojolari, which it is. Perfect. You know you're rebuilding the Arizona Cardinals when the whole video takes you from the middle of the day, night to nighttime. Hey, let's send it to midseason. See how we do. Four and two at midseason. The Rams are four and three, so the NFC West is a battle, but this is a playoff team once again. The sack leader in the league, Carter Richter. Nine sacks, five TFLs. He's tied with Tracy Montague. Let's go to the playoffs, baby. Come on. Dude, I saw it said playoffs, and I was like, oh my God, did we miss the playoffs? No, we got a bye. The Seahawks came out of nowhere. We were fighting with the Rams earlier in the season. The Seahawks end 11 and 6. The Rams don't make the playoffs. The Cardinals go 12 and 5. We got a bye. We're the one seed with a bye. On the other side of the bracket, the Ravens are the one seed. God damn. A 91 overall. It's actually insane because this team, this team was once a 75 overall. A 75 overall. Overstreet's at 90. Hollywood's a 91. Gatson is a, you're not actually 99, are you? He's a 96 overall elusive back. Eric Gatson. 94 speed, 93 break tackle, 97 excel. He's come so far. That's crazy. Let's actually check in on the stats of some of our guys. Kyler Murray obviously updated himself to a superstar. His accuracies are much better. Medium is 95, short's 96. Seven, and then he's still fast as hell because it's still Kyler Murray. Beautiful. McBride has not come nearly as far as I thought he would. He's still only 84 overall star. I expect him to become something crazy. Never did, but that's all right. So Bates really didn't get like any reps this year, but I just don't have anywhere to put it. I don't have anywhere to put Kenya Bates. I have too many good wide receivers. I haven't even unlocked his dev trait yet. We'll see what Amari Cooper does at the end of this season, and maybe he starts to get some reps, but this could be our Super Bowl season, so it might not even matter. Defense has got two superstar X factors both drafted felix andrews and carter richter carter richter our round one pick one after our 0 and 17 season is now a 93 overall with 99 finesse moves 86 speed oh my god he's so good he's so good and then uh let's check in on felix andrews who's also superstar x factor it's a superstar x factor player is 23 that's absolutely insane 95 speed 96 excel 95 
five man. Absolute demon. Bassey, who we traded with the Chargers for. His looks like he's had a good season. He's up to an 87 overall. Edwards, what? That's not right. No, dude, that has to be a glitch. This was the third round CPU auto-drafted linebacker. Was a superstar X Factor? What? Glenn Blackshear. Okay, after the second round, I had the CPU takeover. They drafted this dude. He was a 74 overall hidden dev. And I was like, cool. He's probably decent. That's an understatement. He's a superstar X Factor left outside linebacker. Oh my God. I'm sorry, TJ Edwards. TJ Edwards, it's over, man. This dude is gonna be, oh my God, we have three X Factors on defense and none on offense. David Collins looking great. Matthew Burse was a star and Ojolari's looking good too. Malcolm Lucas, still just normal dev. Dude, I can't believe Blackshear is X Factor. The CPU picked me up the superstar X Factor in the third round. That shouldn't be possible. It really shouldn't be possible. Like, well, it should be. It should be possible. I mean, NFL teams in real life get studs in late rounds, you know, every year. 91 overall squad. We get a bye. Oh my God. This team is so set for so long. 91 overall Cardinals taking on the 91 overall Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's get it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at our three X Factors. They're all drafted players. And then Connor Gates is the superstar X Factor quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay, let's see how this looks. Cardinals? No, no score. Whoa, multiple red zone stop. Buccaneers get a field goal. Cardinals are on the board, seven to three. Bucks are back on, 10-7. Dude, there's a ton of stuffs. 21 to 10. Now we're pulling away. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 10 to 21, Arizona. Looks like they're gonna put this away. Let's see what Kyler does. Rifles one, two. I think that was Hollywood. Broken up, fourth and two. Wait a minute. You know, that's one thing I never got. I never got a punter. What was I doing? It's not a bad punt, though. Gets it down to the 10, and the return team... Swallow him up at the 25. Look at Connor Gates coming out here for the Bucks. I respect it, Connor Gates. I like what you're doing. This is going to be our first time actually winning a playoff game. Ooh, good look who it is. Oh, it's not. I thought that was Carter Richter. It was Julian Bassey. Look at how many abilities we got out there. Bassey's coming through. Maybe. No, he had a lot of time back there. Third and 20. Connor Gates has struggled. 10 for 27. That D-line is disgusting. They do have Tristan Wirfs, who's probably doing a good job bottling some of this up. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty good defense right there. Counter Gates throws into no man's death. There's just was nothing going there. It's fourth and 20. They got to go for it. And this game's about to be over. Final play of the game here. Fourth and 20. We got a different lineup in big blitz oh my god he caught that chris godwin what a throw what a catch carter richter is gonna have a double team on him here let's see if he can blow through it go richter get home buddy get home richter hail mary from tampa bay swatted down and this game is over the cardinals we finally win a playoff game but technically we haven't won the wild card because we actually got to buy to the divisional so maybe the wild card still haunts us honestly neither quarterback played neither quarterback played that good it was a very defensive game but connor gates really struggled kyler 21 for 32 then on the ground eric gatson was actually amazing 18 for 89 and miles sanders on the buccaneers is pretty solid too in the air it was Amari Cooper and Quincy Overstreet. For the Buccaneers, it was Elijah Moore, Godwin, and Mike Evans. We won a playoff game, boys, and it was pretty easy, too, honestly. Let's head over to the NFC Championship. Damn, take it on. Oh, my God. It's a battle of the NFC West in the NFC Championship? Seahawks versus Cardinals. Damn. Hey, and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I didn't look at the stats around the league. Kyler continues to throw for less yards as our team gets better. It doesn't make any sense. Touchdown interception ratio is immaculate, though. 26 to 3. It's like we're just handing people L's, dude. And Gatson keeps getting better and better. Holy shit. On the season, Eric Gatson had 1,440 rushing yards and 21 touchdowns. Overstreet was my leading wide receiver, then Amari, then Hollywood. Gatson even had three touchdowns. So Gatson had 24 touchdowns on the season. Oh my God. Defensively, Zayvon Collins, of course. Then Felix Andrews in tackles. Looks like nine sacks for BJ Ojolari, 15 and a half for Richter, and five and a half for Julian Bassey. Looks like Julian Bassey was a good addition to this team. Certainly worth more than any of those draft picks would have been. I wonder if, I gotta say, I'm shocked that Eric Gatson is not in the MVP running at all. All quarterbacks. I know it's a quarterback award, but offense a player of the year in the NFC. Looks like it's gonna be Saquon Barkley. Eric Gatson is third. I'm so shocked. Saquon must have gone off. So, defensive player of the year is almost Carter Richter, but it's gonna go to Demarcus Lawrence on the Vikings. That's a bummer. No offensive or defensive rookies of the year. Didn't really do much different this year other than basically knowing that we were gonna have a hell of a year with all the additions and how well our players were progressing. So, just wanted to check in on that. Ahead of the NFC Championship.
Let's make sure we upgrade our boys here. Let's see a Carter Richter upgrade. Let's give him Speed Rusher. <laughs> oh, Carter Richter, such a dog. Excel, Awareness, Hit Power, Play Rec, and Pursue. It's actually a massive upgrade right there. Give Julian... Hey, our whole D-line's getting upgrades here. Julian Bassey can get one as well. He's gonna get Excel, Agility, Finesse. Oh my God. And then our X-Factor, Glenn Blackshear. The most shocking X-Factor I've ever gotten in a draft. He's gonna go up to an 80 overall. And he's gonna get an ability slot. 90 overall Cardinals versus the 90 overall Seahawks. They got tight end Curtis Richards X-Factor. Then they still got DK and Jackson Smith and Jigba, who must have progressed really well to be in their top three there. Maybe not DK, but definitely Jackson Smith. Got a home field advantage. All right, boys, let's hope this goes well. Seattle starts with a touchdown. Ooh, not looking. Oh, okay, there we go. Tied it all up. 10 to 10, 17 to 10, 17, 16. Holy shit, this game is close. 24, 16. Oh, we're milking. Ooh, wait a minute. Tw oh, we're in victory formation. Dude, I saw 22 to 27. I was starting to get real nervous. The Cardinals are handing out L's. And this is going to take us to the Super Bowl. Oh my God. 22 to 27. No timeouts left for the Seahawks. That's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. Massive win for Kyler Murray, Gatson, and Carter Richter. That's the core of this team, really. 22 to 27 in the NFC Championship. Some massive upgrades after that game, too. Ojalari, Gatson, Paris Johnson, and Quincy Overstreet. I'll give, I'm going to give Gatson one manually. I want to see the boy get upgraded. He's number 23, too. He selected that himself. He just knew he was the GOAT. 20 27 to 22 right there. Massive W. Take me to the Super Bowl, baby. Who are we taking on in the Super Bowl? I'm going to guess uh, Kansas City Chiefs. That's my guess. Oh my God, fuck. This game is too predictable, bro. They always got them in there. Let's take a look at the yearly awards. It's not exactly a galaxy brain guess. The Chiefs are always good. But the 12 and 5 Cardinals will take on the 12 and 5 Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl. We do have some player upgrades to make. AJ Christian, Zayvon Collins, Thompson, Fuller. Lots of upgrades here. Definitely could use every single one of them. Whew. Before we go anywhere, boys, this is the Super Bowl. This is our goal. Let's look at this final Cardinals roster and then the final Chiefs roster. Eric Gatson is our 99 overall player, which is so crazy. I only took Gatson because he just looked good, but I really didn't have a lot of info on him. So for him to be our highest overall player is so cool. Only his second year out of Clemson. That's crazy. Carter Richter, round one, pick one. Absolute demon. Felix Andrews, also out of Clemson. He was teammates with Eric Gatson. They go way back. 95 speed, 96 XL. All three of those guys. These two are superstar X Factor and Gatson's superstar. Then you got Hollywood. We stuck with Hollywood. He's got 98 speed and he's been a beast on this team. We drafted Quincy Overstreet, also been a stud out of Bama. Paris Johnson, up to a 92 overall. Jalen Thompson, a 91. Kyler Murray, a 91. And a superstar. That's why I stick with your boy. Amari Cooper in free agency. We wanted some veteran leadership and uh, a super good wide receiver. AJ Christian, the superstar DB. Julian Bassey, we traded for from the Chargers. Zayvon Collins, stuck with the squad from day one. He was around when we were 0-17. Let's see what the Chiefs have done. Their best players, Chris Jones and Patty Mahomes. Nick Bolton's a 99. Creed Humphrey's a 99. Isaiah Pacheco's a 99. No wonder this team makes the damn Super Bowl. Holy shit, they got five 99s. McDuffie's a 98. Do they have any new players? Did they even draft anybody? Chuck Daniels is their first player I can find they drafted. He's a left tackle. Uh, John Dixon's a halfback. Tyree Ross is an X-Factor strong safety. Oh my God. All right, shit. Chiefs know what they're doing. There's no question about that. They know what they're doing. It's Time to play the Super Bowl, baby. This is a hell of a Super Bowl right here, boys. Let's go. Hard Rock Stadium. Cardinals versus Chiefs in the big game. Oh, this is so dope. Chiefs scored easily on their opening drive. It's first and 10. Let's make something out of this. We'll start with our best player. Eric Gatson. How do you not go to him? Now let's give him a handoff. This is Eric Gatson overall, right? The 99 overall. Oh my God, excellent blocks. Gatson's got a lot of room. One rush, 25 yards. Let's get it, Gatson. Bring in my boy Quincy Overstreet. There's Quincy. There's Quincy Overstreet right here. See if this is man coverage. See what they come out in here. Oh, yeah, Overstreet. You can run man all you want. He's going to torch that. Let's go, the youngster. RPO alert screen. Just going to give this one to Gatson and just barely break that tackle. Right over the middle is Hollywood Brown, 98 speed. He's hard to keep up with. Let's just hand this one off up the middle. Oh, if you guys can block 99 Chris Jones, this will be a nice one. It is. Gatson goes for six yards. Second and four. Can we punch this in? 
Oh no. Damn. George Carlaft is sack Skyler. That's not good. We got a lot of room to pick up now. Third and 19. A lot to pick up here. Oh, Amari Cooper just torched his man. Got rocked. Damn. Got to take our field goal. That's a tough drive there. Chiefs defense was flying around. We'll take what we can get. Three to seven, but that's that's the only input I'm allowed to have. Fortunately, all I could get us, the Chiefs are just handing it to us right now. They're about to score again. Kadarius Tony with a reception. That's a shocker. And Isaiah Pacheco punches it in. No. Cardinals can score right back though, right? Oh my God. Is it going to be a blowout in the Super Bowl? 21 to six. 21 to nine. Guys, we need more. Wait a minute. Oh my God. This is huge. 21 to 16. Second and goal. We have to stuff them, boys. We need a turnover right here, right now. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to throw low. Great. What? Oh, that was such horseshit. There's three guys there. That was just Madden physics nonsense. Look at this bullshit, dude. You got two tacklers right on him, but because he's in the middle of an animation, he can't be tackled. Look at that. Like what? What was that? Oh, wow. That might have been that might have been the game right there. That's so frustrating. Dude, that would have forced what a what would that have forced? A field goal? Well, we still have all three timeouts, and it looks like we're pretty close to scoring. Kyler drops back pretty far, starts to roll out lasers. And that was one of only four in completions. Wasn't bad, though. It stopped the clock. Second and 10. Dude, the Chiefs might just be too much of a superpower for us. Kyler. Wow, where was that to? Third and 10. All of Kyler's incompletions are coming right now. No, I hate going out sad, man. It ain't over. It ain't over. Kyler, we need a big completion right now or step up and run it. Dude, what are you doing? Kyler, this is so questionable. Your, your decision making right now. Kyler, Kyler, Kyler just lobbed a pick to put it away. No, that's going to be your last throw. Damn, boys. Oh, don't make me watch it. Don't make me watch it. 28 to 16. Three field goals and only one touchdown in the Super Bowl. And the Chiefs dynasty beats the Cardinals. No. Honestly, overall, I would say the rebuild was a total success. Other than not winning the Super Bowl right here, we really did build an amazing Cardinals squad, but... We fell a little short here. And honestly, we were a defensively heavy team. Like, our defense was so good. And we let up 28 points in the Super Bowl. So, it's hard to say you're a defensive team when you do that. But let's take a look at the stats. Kyler, 19 for 25. Patrick Mahomes, 24 for 28. On the ground, honestly, Gatson was 8 for 63, 7.8. Still had a really good averages. Receiving Quincy Overstreet, 7 for 127 on a touchdown. Wow. Dude, that fucking touchdown from their tight end was such BS. That was so annoying. Certainly a bummer there, boys. We we fell short in the big game. But but one thing a lot of people wanted to see is they wanted to see me sim like five years in the future just to see like what the team does. I want to try that. Let's see if we win a Super Bowl. I'm going to consider this rebuild complete. We took them to the Super Bowl. They're a 92 overall. But now I'm going to sim five years in the future and we'll see if we want to bowl in that time. <laughs> oh, shoot. I don't know if this is good. The year is 2030. Halfway through the 2030 season, the Cardinals are four and four. What does the roster look like? I simmed, I think, four years then, not five. My my bad. Oh no, Kyler's gone. <laughs> Kyler's gone. We have Danny Dimes and somebody Bishop. Overstreet is a hard 99. Yo. Overstreet's a 99. Oh my God. He's the best wide receiver in the league. He's the best wide receiver in the league. Offensive line looks a little depleted, but we still got the two studs that I drafted. And defensively, we have Richter still. He's a 99. Bassey's a 96. Felix is a 99. Ojalari's a 94. AJ Christian's a 97. We have a, an insane defense. Did we ever win the bowl though? League history. This is the moment of truth, boys. In 2029, it was Dak on the Jets. So Dak won Super Bowl MVP with the Jets. Okay. In 2028, it was the Niners beat the Steelers. In 27, the Niners beat the Chiefs. And in 26 was when we lost. Oh no. Darn it. Would have been cool. Would have been cool. All right, boys. Hey, this has been the Arizona Cardinals rebuild. Let me know what you want to see next. I love you. Thanks for watching as always. See you guys in the next video. Peace.